Hi, I'm John, the Poker Chip Engineer Termel, and this is a commentary on Stowe Boyd's July 5th, 2009 article titled, Alternative Currencies is Small the New Big. Alternative Currencies is Small the New Big. A recent piece by Ben Bolt at World Changing suggests that alternative currencies seem to pop up in bad times, but may not have a real impact on local communities, even in the worst of times. <laughs> Tell that to the people in Argentina. From World Changing, Bright Light Local Currencies Grow During Economic Recession by Ben Bolt. Quote, at least 4,000 complementary currencies are now estimated to be in circulation worldwide, compared with fewer than 100 in 1990. According to Bernard Leiter, co-founder of the Euro and now a local currency proponent. And me and Bernard, the banker, go back way far in our arguments. And you notice he didn't say global currency proponent, which I am. I'm in favor of global hours, tradable anywhere I want. So he's never supported Unilets, ever. This local currency proponent always trying to keep it small. So, <clears throat> the currencies take on various forms. Many function similar to the traditional currency, but are distributed at a discounted rate. Not necessarily a minor feature to encourage participation, such as the Berkshires or the Cimarron in Venezuela. I should look more into that one. Others are designed so that each paper note reflects the per hour labor required to create the product, such as Ithaca Hours in New York or community-oriented mutual economy in Hong Kong. Well, look, the Ethica Hour is nothing but a $10 U.S. bill, and it's written on it, and that's why it's the best kind of money. It has the hour, and it has the link to the U.S. value, 10 U.S. dollars. So it's nothing but a $10 bill that they're printing themselves called hours. And they use it like a let's currency and not like a one-hour-for-hour hour time bank currency. In Switzerland, the WEIR, the German word for WE, functions as a mutual credit system. When a buyer makes a purchase from a WEIR participant, the seller receives credit in a WEIR account. The credit can then be spent by purchasing something from another participant. So are they allowed to go negative and are they using their own chips is the question, or do they wait for a deposit and Fed first? Economists have monitored the WEIR since it began in 1934. Whenever the economy goes up, the turnover in WEIR decreases. When business people cannot sell goods in Swiss francs, then they go into the weir, said Margaret Kennedy, a German-based consultant on complementary currencies, who wrote the book Interest and Inflation-Free Money. So she got her equation right. At the present moment, people are much more open to these types of ideas. Well, yeah, more hungry, starving people. Pilot projects similar to the weir are now underway in Belgium, France, and Germany, Kennedy said. In order for alternative currencies to succeed, organizations, institutes, or individuals need to be committed to the currency's additional demands. Not only must the currency be counted separately, like American and Canadian, big deal, but businesses must be convinced to accept the currency and know where they can, in turn, spend it. Well, there's a list of the stores where you can spend it, sir. That's why everybody else has taken it. In Canada, the Toronto dollar circulated about 90,000 worth of paper currency last year. Peanuts. Less than in years past. Less peanuts. Organizers are now attempting to shift to an electronic version to simplify its management. Okay. The labor involved in tracking notes and doing all the accounting involved is too onerous for a volunteer organization, said David Walsh, the dollar's co-founder. Why are you tracking the notes? No wonder it's expensive. Robert Costanza, an ecological economics professor at the University of Vermont, said local currencies support buy local programs. Yes. But he has found, not found any currency that has had a significant impact on the region's overall economy. Gee, I guess he missed the Argentine survival, right? And he missed the Japan integration of community currencies. And he missed what happened in Argentina. So, And he missed in what happened in Brazil. So there are several examples of currencies that survive. They keep going, Constanza said. But the question is, at what scale? Well, I guess it depends on how many people are drowning and decide to use the lifeboats. Gee, they don't get used much when the ship is running right. That's right, the lifeboats don't get used much when the ship's running right. But when it's not, they're there. Communities who have them ready to go. 
All right, continuing the article, not from Bolt, but the writer Stoboyd says, obviously, if the goal is to, say, slowing down the movement of money out of the community, well, no, that's not the goal. We don't want to, if it wants to move out of the community and buy stuff from overseas, fine. We just don't want to be short at home because some of it's gone. Wake up. So the goal is not to slow down movement out of the community. It's to have enough in the community no matter how much moves out. You'd have to actually measure that to decide if the alternative currency was doing that. Oh, it's too hard to measure what we really don't need to do anyway. For example, the RFID tracking of the money. If people would agree to that sort of surveillance. I know, why haven't they done it with federal cash? Because it's too stupid. All right, but this begs two questions. <clears throat> Does an alternative currency have to be in large-scale use? No, large-scale choice. Everybody uses a little bit. <clears throat> Is it possible for it to be a success at small scale? Well, big scale and small scale, too. Do alternative currencies have to stand for something? Yeah, the value behind the pledged collateral at the cage. Give me a marker for 10 hours of time, and you're promising to work 10 hours. Value. Do they have to represent a strong position on some issue or social cause? Well, no loan sharking. That's the only issue we're dealing with. Why represent our collateral with the loan chicks? loan sharks chips for a fee when we can represent our collateral with our own chips for free. Regarding the first question, which I think is as is small the new big, we have to return to what we know about social systems. The overwhelming majority of alternative currencies are associated with some alternative organization, like the Berkshires Inc. organization behind Berkshires. Although these groups are formed to do something other than what national governments do, they, in effect, are setting themselves up as a simulacrum of government. Well, they're doing the government's job when the government ain't doing it right. Or at least the part of the government that circulates money. So when the bank, when the government isn't running the bank right, the communities are going to run their own banks right. And I think this is an impediment to the socialization of all cash. Well, I don't think so. Um... I think that successful alt-cash will have to take a strong stance on some issue, like putting a higher value on local economic resilience than maintaining a level playing field with the national chains. Well, no, you don't get involved. You issue the chips, make them stable, and whatever comes out is fair. You don't buy us anything. If Walmart wants to accept time dollars, good for them. They're not going to reduce my supply of time dollars. Uh, even if they take a lot out of the community for right now till we earn them back. So, in essence, I think successful alt-cash will have to be almost subversive. Well, yeah, it's going to supplant the usury banking system, get rid of the loan shark debt service, the yoke of oppression from people's necks, and set people free. That is kind of subversive of the established order that people haven't voted for. Shall we have dead slavery or not? Never got the chance to vote on that one. So, uh, it'll have to be involved in a fight against something. Well, yeah, dead slavery. A fight against specific forces. Well, the banking system's engineers identified the positive feedback, and we only have to reprogram and cut one loop, so it's not as if there's a lot of people involved in stopping us from fixing the software, right? I think that's okay. <clears throat> Alternatively, we could have personal money. Well, yeah, okay, that too. Backed by our, their own resources. Social money. Imagine if there were an online, perhaps open source, mechanism to allow anyone to create money, their own IOU, backed up by their own reserves, time, like that envisioned by the Open Money Development Group, to be reviewed later in, in, uh, in detail in a later post. I might create 1,000 Stobucks at my email address and circulate them to those I know. Well, that's what I did at my website, but I didn't create Stobucks. I created Termel Hours, and I sent a five-hour IOU to 39, 39 nights out of 40 in Europe to maybe 11 or 12 or 15, 20 different places, people, saying I owe you a night back in Canada. So that's exactly what I did when I set up my own Let's account on the internet is I did that 11 years ago. So, and uh, perhaps I have a personal cause and the money is designed so that when someone takes it out of circulation, 
by exchanging it for U.S. dollars or euros, a small percentage is allocated to a fund and then directed to the cause I care about. Look it, they don't need your money no more. If they're a good cause and people are involved and want to earn a paycheck doing it, they're getting it already. They don't need your charity no more once money's fixed. So you don't need these little machines to divert a percentage of all transactions. It's accounting for nothing. Don't need it. So, uh, people that know me would be likely to accept this money from me, especially if this practice were commonplace. Well, everybody in Europe accepted my IOUs for a night back in Canada, and I'd probably accept yours right away because it's not much to back up your promise, is it? If you can't find someone to take my IOU in your, at your place, What's wrong? How come you haven't got a friend with an empty room? He'll take my IOU, so I don't worry about you reneging on your promise if I need a room in your town. You're going to be able to find someone who will take my IOU, won't you?